So this is the handover for the auto sleepers symbol. We'll begin with the cab section first of all. External filler cap gives you access to your diesel and also to the Adblue system. Ignition key in, twist, and then you can hang the filler cap on the base. With the Adblue, you'll likely get a dashboard indication telling you when that needs to be topped up. When you first open the cab door, you'll notice at the end of the dashboard, you've got your bonnet release. We'll go there in a second. And then underneath the passenger seats, you've got your vehicle toolkit and beneath the floor, the cab battery. Releasing the bonnet is done via a latch, which is located in the middle of the bonnet. When you first extend it up, so put your flap through. Over on the far left-hand side, you've got your screen wash. You've got these service caps that you can take off them, which then give you access to your power steering, radiator and brake fluid reservoirs. Oil filler and dipstick are there. Should you ever need to jump start the vehicle because of the position of the engine battery, pop the cap up like so. Positive is attached onto that flat plate and the negative goes onto the bolt at the front there. On the driver's side of the vehicle, you've got your access port for your gas system for refilling. There's a gauge on the inside of the dashboard, which I'll show you later on, which tells you how full your gas system is. Your fresh water filler cap. Use one of the small keys, twist. And you should then be able to put your hose pipe straight in. Adjacent to that, and provided with the auto sleeper, um, there is an alternative whale system, so you can connect that up cartridge up at one end and the pipe at the other and fill up your water tank on that system. All right. Alongside, you've got an external 12 volt and external aerial point sockets as well. Just below the floor, you've got, sorry, just below the sill, I should say, you've got your exhaust vent for the diesel heating system. Uh, just below the floor, you've got your exhaust port for your gas uh, heating system as well as the fresh water drain tap and then the mains cable is plugged in alongside there are fridge vents at the top and bottom um, of the van these also come with winter covers these can go on for extreme temperature use low temperatures just to prohibit um, air circulation and obviously maintain and obviously then come off they're also quite useful for storage for keeping the muck and the debris out at the base, you've got the exhaust vent for the diesel heating system for the room heater. Top of the back doors above the rear high level brake light, you've got your reversing camera. And then when you first open up the back doors, you've got your freestanding table and the access to your toilet cassette and also the awning. We'll talk about that later on. To access the toilet cassette, open up the doors. Uh, make sure that the slider is shut inside. You should be able to pull up on this blue lever at the base and the whole body of the cassette will come out. On a campsite, you'll have a collection point for these to go into. So you take the blue cap off entirely, tip up, press the air valve in at the top, and that allows the waste then to be discharged out of the base. You can use sachets or a green liquid for the highlands, uh, mixed with about two liters of water, cup full of your base chemical, and mix the two together and then slide the whole cassette back in like so. Tee up into the slot for the awning. These are sunshades for wet or windy conditions. These should be put away. Wind the awning out to a point where you can access the legs and squeeze each leg in in turn and then slide the leg through because these are new they do need a firm press back to lock the legs into position same story with the other side and then you can walk the legs out and walk the awning out accordingly. It's a bit windy uh, today, so we won't fully extend this one. To retract it, fold the leg lock back in and let the whole leg come back up through your fingertips. 
and then use the push bar then to then lock it back into position like so for the spring loaded back onto that stub. Same story with the other side. Pull the leg down. And then just make sure that it goes back in onto the stub, like so. Retract the awning. Back in. It's worth mentioning that you should really have the sliding door shut when you're opening and closing. It just stops the underside of the pelmet from catching the top of the door. Fitted beneath the auto sleeper, you have a onboard gas tank. You'll notice that there's a black shroud or casing over the front. You can unclip that casing and it gives you access to a brass tap, which you can use to isolate the gas supply should you um, get a smell of gas or should you be concerned about a gas leak. As you come out, towards the outside of the vehicle, so almost behind the sliding step, um, there's a black casing that you'll see, which has got a yellow tab uh, centrally located. This is a crash sensor installed by Truma. The idea is, is that if you go over a bump in the road or if the vehicle is involved in a collision, it deploys the yellow tab. It sticks out about half a centimeter or so um, and just going over a speed hump in certain situations might be sufficient to, to trigger it. So you won't get any gas flow coming through. So you push in on that yellow tab to reset and that will then allow you to get the gas through into the body of the van. When you open up the sliding door beneath the forward facing seat, you have your step. Step will retract on ignition as well and there are a couple of switches for the courtesy lights which are below the plinths behind the seats and also one for the outside awning light as well. So when you first come into the auto sleeper above the sliding door you've got your auto sleeper control panel and also the whale control panel. We'll start off on the auto sleep one first of all. Power on and touch the touch screen and it should illuminate that as a blue panel and that then turns on your power. You've then got separate switches for the awning light as well as for your main interior lights there. Switch for the water pump, your fresh water level indicator and grey water level indicators. Press the home button and that will then allow you to then access your vehicle battery uh, voltage indicators for both the leisure and vehicle batteries, as well as the current that's drawn in and also showing any solar input as well um, as it fluctuates and rises with use. You can choose to operate from the vehicle battery as an emergency or choose to charge the vehicle battery from the mains charging system. And when you go into your settings button, you have the ability to set up things like heater timer controls, um, amongst other functions, um, as well as choosing which batteries you want to use um, and activating the tank heaters uh, for winter use. Home button will take you back to the main screen. It's worthwhile mentioning um, that you've also got your exterior and interior temperatures. It's a humidity setting on here. Currently we're plugged into the mains, so you'll see that little spark symbol up at the top of the screen as well. Adjacent to the control panel, you've got your whale heater control, so you can access both your room heating and water heating from this system. The water heater does require priming, which we'll talk about later on, but to use the water heater settings, you press the button at the top and it goes through a series of options for electric heating, uh, gas and then a combination of gas and electric water heating. It's heating up around about seven litres or so at a time. It takes on average around about 20 to 30 minutes or so for that water to heat up. For the room heating system, you have a similar control. So you press the three wavy line button um, on the left-hand side and you can go through again a series of electric and gas options and increase the temperature or put it into either a night mode or a frost setting mode at the base. 
if you get a caution light come up on the end here perhaps because it can't find ignition uh, for the gas for example uh, then if you keep your finger in on the three wavy line symbol and press the plus button hold it in for a couple of seconds usually allows then for the system to do a digital reset so we're now underneath the sideways fitting seat. You've got your access here to your water heater. Um, you'll see that you've got one isolated tap for the gas supply as it comes up from um, underneath the van. And then there are a couple more at this end for the fridge, for the room heating system, um, and for the blown air heating system in the back of the vehicle. At the moment they are all on, as the illustration shows rotating them through 90 degrees isolates those individual units. On top of the water heater itself there's a drain valve for draining it off for winter storage so you turn the tap through 90 degrees and that allows then the content of the water heater to discharge out onto the floor underneath the van. To reset it you'll need to turn it back towards uh, the cold water feed and then purge the system through by turning on the cold tap and the hot water taps respectively, and drawing the water up from the onboard fresh water tank and through the heater. Located in the bed box behind the driver's seat um, are one of two fuse boards. This one I refer to as the bridge fuses. So this is what's linking uh, the fuse panels um, from the front electrics to the back, um, series of fuses that are located there. There's a second fuse board that we'll show you. And then adjacent to that, you have got your lithium battery. And on the back wall, there is also one master fuse as well for that lithium battery. In the cupboard beneath the oven, you have your sergeant control panel. Main features of it, up on the top left hand side, there is a means of isolating, of turning off um, the 12 volt system. Below that you have a fuse board uh, for the interior fuses for things such as the water pumps and igniters, etc. If any one of those fuses is blown, it usually corresponds with a small red LED light. You can see the green one over on the right hand side here indicating that all of those are uh, operational and currently working. And then over on the right hand side you have your MCB and RCD control switches for the mains input and at the top your battery charger and water heater switches. So those switches all need to be on if you want your mains battery charger to work or if you want any aspect of the water heater room heating system to work on electric. So to recap on the gas system, you obviously need to fill up your um, underslung gas tank. You'll need to make sure that the crash sensor has been reset. Um, there's a cap gas level indicator in the cab also. You should be able to then draw gas through just by turning on and igniting the individual burners. It's worth noting that there's no isolators on these lids, so if this lid comes down over the flame, they will continue to burn and it will cause the glass to shatter. So make sure that the system is nice and cool before you fold the glass down. For the oven and grill, you go in one direction for the grill to light at the top. Like so. And you go in the opposite direction for the oven to light at the back. So above the hob, you've got an extractor fan, which you can turn on to draw uh, some of the cooking smells off of the hob and also a separate down lighter on that one as well. The microwave is mains operated, so having plugged into the mains externally, put on your isolation switch. These are plateless microwaves, so you can just put your produce straight in, set up your power and turn on the system. The fridge on this symbol is a three-way fridge. To turn the power on, press and hold in on this button for a couple of seconds and you'll see all of the display light up. If you then use the surface mounted square, you can then press and hold on that one and choose between your gas, vehicle battery when you're traveling or um, mains if you're on mains hookup. There's an automatic setting that will self-detect uh, the strongest supply and utilize that. And then having selected your power, you can then select your output and again use the arrows to increase or decrease 
the number of lights that are displayed, the more lights shown, the colder the fridge will become and then lock that in on settings. If the unit fails to find your application that you've set, then the, initially the control panel here starts to flash or pulse, and then also you'll get a corresponding red light flashing within this small blue segment here. Silver bowl toilet or cassette toilet, so you can move it into any desired location. Open up, they give you a complimentary sachet to get you started. There's a lever on the front which needs to be swung round towards the wheel arch uh, to open up the main cassette. Your electric flush button is behind the cassette lid and that draws water from the main fresh water tank with the bump switched on to send water around the inside of the bowl. As the cassette gradually becomes full, you'll see this green segment at the back here slowly turn over to red. They recommend a toilet paper that's designed for chemical tanks um, so it's easily to break down and dissolve. After you've used the cassette, you'll need to make sure that the lever is closed back over. Avoid leaving any fluid sat in the bottom of the bowl as it will drop into the cassette space when you pull the cassette out. Tip up sink. And with the water pump on, you should be able to draw water through from within the van. And then tip the sink back gently for it to go into a collection trough and drain off. You've got a range of brief lights around the inside of the van. This is one that often gets forgotten, certainly whenever I overtake people. Um, to open and close this one, push in on the brown lever and it should then be able to be extended up. It can be tilted into a range of different directions, but for traveling, it must be pulled down fully and make sure that it's nice and secure. The living space roof lights operate in a similar way. You have a button that you press in, and then you can pull the handle down into a variety of different locations for deployment, including fully opened. Just make sure that it's firmly pushed back up the other side of the button for security, and then there are lines and fly screens on the underside. A similar arrangement for the front one as well. Push in, slide it through accordingly. Bed arrangements in symbols. So, cab seat all the way forward. Underneath the wardrobe, attached with Velcro, is a hard back cushion which has got a little tab onto it. I'll lift this out of the way and that cushion then can be inserted down adjacent to the cushion and that then enables you then to have your first bed when you remove the backrest. For the second single bed take away these infill cushions for a moment. There's a popper stud which is attached onto the back of the headrest. Make sure you don't yank it forward because you can rip those studs out. And then there's a lever. Push that lever forward. Let the whole mechanism fall down. And then take one of the larger infill cushions and deploy that down like so. For the double bed, take away the backrest cushion. If you've deployed this one and you're converting it, just move this one out of the way. It just makes the operation a little bit easier. On the front of the seat, you should be able to just pull forward. There's no release latch or clip for it. Slide the whole bed frame all the way over and then deploy your backrest and these infill cushions into the residual gap. And you have the option, obviously, of reinserting the leg cushion as well, depending on whether you want to sleep the width or the length of the vehicle. So when you come into the cab, you've got your basic steering wheel controls. These are connected up to the radio unit, so you've got your volume control as well as the ability to mute, and then your telephone controls, because you can set up through the Bluetooth. Stalks on the back are for your indicators and for the side lights. 
as well as main beam. And then you also have uh, your cruise control and speed limiter on the lower stalk. Right hand stalk is your wiper controls uh, with back four screen wash. Located on the right hand side of the steering wheel, you have the air ride system. This manual version relies on you unscrewing these bezels completely and connecting up a small pump um, to inflate each chamber. Pressure operates between around about two and four bar. As a maximum, any higher than that, you'll find it uncomfortable. It's not good for the vehicle either. There is a switch here. Um, because it's the manual version, um, it doesn't come with um, any kind of onboard compressor. So located over on the right hand side of the dashboard, you have your gas level indicator for the onboard gas tank. When you first turn on the ignition, you'll see a series of green lights light up. Over on the driver's door, you have your electric mirror and electric window functions. You use the toggle at the top to adjust the top mirrors, blind spot mirrors you'll need to adjust with your fingertips and then your electric window functions are there. Pinch and slide this forward, there's magnetic strips on the leading edge of the door and also pinch on this one. With this pushed back, it will join up with the corresponding one on the opposite side to give you your Constantina blinds to the cab. Central controls include your ventilation uh, for speed of the fan and temperature, uh, external and internal circulation, as well as then the direction of the fan. Use this button to uh, turn on and turn off your air conditioning. Heated mirrors, central locking button can be deployed from there as well. Has a light switch and the ability to switch off the um, ASR system. Head unit um, has a control onto it. Takes a few seconds to warm up and you can then access your radio, media, and navigation, as well as phone settings. And obviously control either from here or back onto the steering wheel for your volume control as well. When you press the button on the navigation system, TomTom Tom have a little illustrated uh, menu that they'll take you through so you can set up your TomTom Tom ready for use. Above the cup holders underneath the dashboard, you've got your USB um, input, which feeds straight into your head unit. So that concludes the handover for your auto sleeper symbol. Sincerely hope this van is going to give you lots of miles and lots of smiles. On behalf of Highland Camper Vans, thank you for watching.